Well, the essential makeup of this country is changing rapidly in the face of massive immigration over the past 50 years. How quickly is it changing? Well, a new report from the Center for Immigration Studies finds that as of last year, American contains 43.7 million immigrants. That's an increase of nearly 13 million since the year 2000. Since 2000, you remember 2000, not that long ago, 13 million new immigrants. Immigrants are now 13.5% of the population. That's the highest figure in more than a century. You may like it, you may dislike it, but it's a big deal. Stephen Camerata, director of research at the Center for Immigration Studies, he wrote that new report and he joins us now. The first question is an obvious one, which is, no matter where you are on immigration, this is a massive deal. It's changing the country at the most basic level, and yet I don't ever see this reported anywhere. Why is that? Yeah, it's a great question. Look, I mean, most of this immigration is legal. And remember, it's not the weather. It's something we can control. The immigrant population, you just ran through some of the numbers. Let me give you a hit, you know, maybe with some more. The immigrant population has doubled since 1990, tripled since 1980, and quadrupled since 1970. Again, it's mostly legal. Illegal is in there, too, but it's mostly legal immigration. And we don't have the kind of national debate about this that we probably should. The impact is enormous. Let me just give you one. One third of all the children in poverty today in America live in an immigrant household. About half of immigrant households receive some form of welfare. But again, we're not getting much discussion. All we ever get is, well, we have illegal immigration. Should we amnesty them? Should we not? But the bigger question of what number of people can we assimilate and what makes sense for our country is seldom ever asked. And even more rarely asked is, what does the public want? It's their country. It belongs to American citizens. I don't see them being notified about this. Right. In general, surveys show that the public likes the immigrants that they know, but they yeah. mostly think that the level is too high and that a, a lower level would help with incorporation of the immigrants, assimilation, and so forth. And I think so the public, on the one hand, likes the individuals but wants less immigration. But there are very few politicians who actually articulate that point of view. That's how I feel personally. I've met very few immigrants I don't like. They're yeah. mostly great, but that doesn't mean that the policy itself makes sense. Quickly, what does this mean for our population going forward? Yeah, very roughly. Over the next 50 years, immigration is going to add maybe 100 or 105 million new people above what it would otherwise be without immigration. So that's roughly equal 100 to... 100 million? Yeah, a little over 100 million. So that's roughly equal to the population of Great Britain and Canada together. All the projections show it. Census, Pew, my own, everybody kind of agrees about 100 million. So out of a country of 320, that's a totally different country. Right. It's adding a whole third to the population of what we currently have. And that has implications for the environment and traffic and congestion and pollution and sprawl. But again, very little discussion of just these basic numbers, which really are not in dispute. No discussion. I mean, none that I ever hear. I, that's weird. You don't see it. Stephen, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Sure. Nice to have some facts. Well, for reaction to these new numbers, we're joined now by Fox analyst and co-host of The Five, our old friend Juan Williams. Juan, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So I think Stephen Camerata summed it up well when he said of the American public, most people really like immigrants. That's certainly how I feel. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I've ever met one I didn't like, actually. They're hard workers. They kind of buy into America. They're great. But the macro question remains unanswered, which is, what's the effect on the population here. You can't switch out your population to this degree and not have some kind of social volatility. Why does the average person not get to weigh in on this very often, do you think? Well, I think we do get to weigh in. I remember you go back to 1965, they had a change in terms of the Immigration Act that changed the premise of it and I think made it more about family reunification, you know, bringing families yes. together. And then you have the argument in the current context, I think especially after last year's campaign, Tucker, where there's sort of a populist tribal instinct that says, wait a second, these people are coming in and it's a zero-sum game. They may be taking jobs, they may be driving wages down, but what we've seen from studies is that long term, in fact, they generate economic activity, create jobs, and then you have people held up like, you know, Sergey Brin at Google or remember right. Steve that's, Jobs That's not a Apple. serious economic yeah. point. I mean, n nobody, nobody argues with real data right. that our current immigration policy is a net boon to the economy. Oh, if yeah, it they were, do. They if do. it were, California wouldn't have, with the most immigrants in the country, the most people in poverty, which it now does. California is far poorer than it was when I grew up there, and there's only one reason, immigration. So that's not really no, a point. I no, mean, no, no, wait a second. I'm interested in hearing you on this, because California, first of all, their economy is doing pretty good. You said a high level of people who are impoverished, and they have a very high immigrant population. As you just yes. heard from Stephen, 
a high percentage of children in our country who live in poverty are in Correct. immigrant families. That means they're at the lowest level of income. They're competing at the lowest level. Exactly. And they're doing everything they can to, to get a foothold in our society. It doesn't mean that it's a negative in terms of the American economy, though. Right. Well, that's, uh, I mean, I, I don't think you're making the point with respect, but let me ask you a bigger question here. So okay. we're at a moment, and every survey shows it, of total division within our society. People have less in common with each other than they've ever had. Yeah. And we're asking basic questions like, what ties us all together? Why are we all in this together? Do you not see any correlation between massive immigration since 1965 and where we are now? The country much less united, much less willing to agree on basic questions like, is the Bill of Rights worth continuing? Things like that. That's not related to immigration? Of course it is. Wow. That's a huge I, cause. I don't know anybody who's challenging the Bill of Rights. I mean, to me... The entire left, the First Amendment, has like been oh, invalidated no. on college no. campuses. I oh, do this I every night, it. trust me. No, okay, I, I, know. I watch it. But I'm going to say, I think, in fact, what the key here, and I'm, I feel like I'm reiterating something Stephen said earlier, is assimilation. Do you share American values? Do you believe you know, in God-given rights and democracy and representation and law and order. That's the key. And, but it's not about, at this point, an, a sort of tribal fight between native-born okay, Americans so and immigrants. Okay, so if we're trying to tell immigrants that law and order is a core American value, which yes, is, is a core Western value, yes. what is the message we send with, say, sanctuary cities or the dreamers? Aren't we telling them in the clearest possible terms that when it's politically inexpedient, we ignore the law? That's exactly the message we're sending to our newest immigrants. You have a right to be here illegally. That's what the left is telling them every day. That's the law and order you hope to inculcate in our immigrant population? Well, I don't see it as the left. I'm listening to you because to, when I hear from the Chamber of Commerce, when I hear from the Sheriff's yeah, Association... Yeah, they're for it too. You're right. Oh, so I, that's who I'm here. I'm, that's not no, the no, left right. talker. That's no, but not when Nancy, the left. No, no. That's a, fa that's a fair point and a point that I often make on this show. Business interests and the radical uh, social left are aligned on this. But when Nancy Pelosi congratulates Dreamers for coming here illegally and says, thank you for breaking the law that the Congress, <laughs> which she's in, passed... Does that send a law and order message, do you think, to immigrants? No, and, but the, the key here is, and I think this is the reason the sheriffs are on it, say, we want law and order, we want you to talk to police, cooperate with police, respect the police, so we don't want you to see us as coming at, so that's a larger conversation. But my point to you is assimilation <laughs> like a is absolutely central to bringing immigrants in if this is going to be successful. So far, look at where the, the, Wall, the Wall Street is right now. Look at our economy. Our economy is not suffering because of immigrants. No, and, and in fact, immigrants are a massive boon for the mm. affluent. I mean, it's cheap That's household true. labor. That's why they love it. They love it. No one <laughs> loves it more than rich people. It's exactly. just the middle class getting shafted, as you know. Juan, thank you for joining us. My pleasure.